In this video, we'll show you how to add this cool snow effect to your Elements-based website. Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to this Elements tutorial. Now today I'm going to show you how to add snow to your website. Uh, we're going to be using JavaScript, but don't worry, you don't need to know how to write any JavaScript. We're just going to be using some scripts that we've found online. Um, and I'll show you how to include the script in your project or um, link to a CDN, which means the script is hosted somewhere else. Um, we'll also look at configuring the effect of the snow as well. So we can create some UI in Elements to control uh, the settings on that. So this is a great little component you can build up and then you'll be able to reuse this in any projects you want for clients or for yourself. So uh, let's dive into the project. Now I've set up a very simple project here. All I've got is a full screen container. So I've set the width to full height and then I've just got some text, some styled text in the uh, in the middle of the page there. Uh, I've set the background to dark so that we can see um, so that we can see our snow because if it was white, wouldn't really be able to see that. So we've, we've set it to dark. Right, um, let's go over to the browser and um, I had a look for a JavaScript snow effect and I've managed to find one. It seems pretty popular um, and it's been around a long time. Seems to work great. Uh, so we're going to go with this one and this is called Snowstorm. Now, um, to include this, I'm going to show you the quick and easy way if you just want to put this on your site and be done. Um, we're going to use an... Um, we can link to the CDN. This is the very quickest way to do it. That means the script is hosted online. So let's look for Snowstorm. Um, and there it is. And we just need um, to link to this script. So um, I'm going to link to the unminified one, um, but you can link to either of these. And I'm going to use the code symbol rather than this, copy this, because this will just copy the path, what we want. Um, we want to use the code symbol because that will add the script tags around it so it's ready to paste in. So I've clicked that and that should have copied it. And then I'm going to go to my project, um, open the site settings, uh, and then um, I've already looked at this, you can see here. So I've gone to the site settings, go to template, and then we just need to paste it into the head of our website. So I'm going to paste that there. So this is the script and you can see it's linking off to another website. So this won't be hosted on our server. This script is hosted somewhere else. Um, so now we've added this, let's close this window. And if I go and preview this in the browser, there you go. Um, we've now, it's now snowing on our website. So it's as easy as that, but um, I think uh, if that's all you need to do, great. You can finish the video now, but if you wanna learn a little bit more about including the script in your website and customizing some of these options, uh, stick around for the rest of the video. All right, so let's, um, let's look at the other options. What I'm gonna do um, in here, we're gonna go back here and I'm gonna get rid of this script that we added. Um, because we're going to include the script in our site, the JavaScript. So if I preview now, no snow. Right, so what we need to do, first thing, um, we need to download the scripts. And here it's got a download section. So let's just click that. Boom, and it's downloaded into my folder. I'm going to drag that to the desktop. And let's have a look inside here. Now, um, we just want the snowstorm.js file. So uh, let's go to my uh, resources here. I'm going to right click, say new folder, and let's call this one scripts. <clears throat> now you don't need to um, you don't need to do a folder here. You could just drop it straight in. But if you're going to have a lot of resources in your site, probably best to put your scripts and things in a folder to keep things nice and tidy, so you can find things. And then I'm just going to drop that. Um, JS file into there, and that's it. And now this is included in our project, which is great. And but we need to load that script, so we're going to need um, this little bit of uh, HTML here, this little snippet. And I can go back up here and we can paste this in. Um, now, if we go and preview this in the browser, this is not going to work because that path is not correct. So, what I'm going to do, let's export this site. We just need a we just need a 
domain name here is asking for a web address. So let's just give it a web address so we can export this. Export site, a new folder, we'll just call this snow. Done. So why I'm exporting this, I'm exporting just to find out and just to double check where the path is for snowstorm. Now I already know this, but this is a handy exercise to go through so that you can learn and um, find out how to do this stuff. So um, it's in the root folder, resources, resources, scripts, snowstorm JS. So it mirrors what we've done in here. Um, resources, scripts, snowstorm JS. So when I go um, back over to our template, it's linking directly to the snowstorm JS, but that's not correct. We need resources uh, forward slash scripts forward slash. So now that mirrors this path here, resources, scripts, snowstorm JS. That's perfect. So let's test we've got this path correct by going to the browser, boom, and that looks that looks good. So now we're not hot linking to a CDN. When we upload this website, all of this will be hosted on our own server, um, which is a much better way to do things for, for this case. All right, um, so next up, I think um, it would be good to customize some of the settings for the snow. Now let's have a look here. Um, because there are some, if we scroll down on here, there are some configurable properties. Um, so we can change the color of the snow, um, set the number of snowflakes, use the twinkle effect. And I think there's an effect to turn the uh, mouse, the following the mouse on and off. So we could, um, it'd be nice to use some of these effects. Now you can just, um, this script here, you can just copy and paste these into here and you could build up the, um, and you could build up the uh, configurations in there that you want. So we could configure these, but this isn't a very nice way to do it and it's not very reusable. So for every project you wanted to use this on, you'd always have to come in here copy the script over and then change these values to what you want. So it's a little bit um, messy. So I think there's a better way to do this. Uh, we're going to do it with a custom component. So let's go ahead and create a new custom component. And um, let's drop this on the page. And we've got our basic template. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to include all the code we need in our um, in this file. So let's go and grab this because we don't need this in the main site template. And I'm going to paste it in here. Now what um, what I want to happen, I want this code to appear in the header area of my website so I can use the portal um, API for that in elements. So if we come into our, uh, I've just gone to the elements documentation and I've looked under templates and there's portal. And this will transport our code. Um, when elements builds the site, it will transport that code and put it in the header for us. Um, so let's do uh, head end. So let's copy this. And I'm just gonna paste that in there and we'll get rid of that comment. And let's take this and paste it into there. Okay, so uh, let's go and preview and just to check everything's still working. Great, that's looking good. Um, still working. So we've obviously got this set up correctly. Now um, we can add some options to this to configure it. Now I'm gonna get rid of the color. Um, I think it'd be good to have a slider here to configure the number of snowflakes. Um, twinkle effect, I'm not sure we need that. Let's go over here and I um, wanted to switch on and off this follow mouse. I think that would be a good one. So this is the setting here. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it into here. And let's set this to false and just see if that works. So now I preview again. And now when I move the mouse around, 
it's it doesn't follow it perfect okay um let's get rid of this because we don't need uh that and i'm going to name our component here uh let's just call this snow time <clears throat> So now our custom component here, and we could drop this into any website. Um, so if I started a new project, I could just drag and drop it into the into that project and I'd have this all to go. Right, so um, this is all good, but we're still changing the values here and it would be nice to have some UI over here to change these settings. So I didn't have to worry about the code. I could just, um, I could just click on here and edit those properties. So um, let's have a look. Let's go to the elements manual. And we're in the elements language and we want to the controls, the UI controls to configure um, to add to elements are in the properties file. That's where we put them. So they're under UI controls. And the first thing I want is a slider. So I'm going to click on slider and it's going to give us some examples here. Let's scroll down. Now this one, um, these are fixed values here. You can see it jumps from zero to 50 to 75. We could use this example um, and it would snap to those values or we could use a free sliding um, slider that we'll, we'll change in one increments. So, uh, and that's the example here. You can see how this sets a default value and min and max and the units are a percentage. We don't need that, so I'll, I'll remove that in a minute. But you can see how this um, differs to the set values here. So let's just copy this code. Um, and it's in a group, which it needs to be to start with, because in our properties file, we have nothing. So when I paste this into here, you can now see I've got this slider example. Um, and let's start uh, customizing our code. So let's change this title for the group. Um, and call it snow uh, snow settings and um, let's have a look in our template flakes they call this uh, flakes amount so we could give this slider uh, a name flake oops flakes amount or maybe flakes amount is a bit much so maybe we'll just call it amount um, the format is going to give us a value and a percentage on the end and we don't want that we just want the raw number so let's get rid of the percent and again here we don't need to display um, a value after the uh, after the number because it you know if I change this you can see there it says px so we don't need any of this we can just delete that um, and let's set a max number we can go 512 so now when I move this slider, it goes and stops at 512. So this would be, um, would change the amount of snowflakes we can have. Now I do know this is JavaScript and um, you probably need to be a little bit careful because this is obviously creating elements on the screen and it may not run so well on old computers. So you'd need to test that and be a bit careful. So you don't, you know, want to go crazy and do 10,000 or something. So let's just stick at 512. I think that's pretty safe that we can move these back and forth. Um, now, the last thing we need to do is just update the ID name. And this is so we can reference it in the template. And we'll call this snow amount. And I'm gonna copy that ID, go back to my template. And where this number is, um, to use a, um, a value, an ID, a value from here, in the template, we use um, double brackets and the name of the uh, of the component of the ID. So double open brackets, gonna paste in the snow amount and then close double brackets. So now when I change this, it will update the snow amount. So let's, uh, let's update it to 512. Let's go and preview that. So this should be giving us a lot of snow. Uh, it looks like quite a lot. Now let's um, take it down to just a few bits and let's see. Yeah, so that's a lot less snow now. So we can clearly see that's working. Yeah, 
yeah just a few just a light uh, light bit of snow there perfect so next up we want to be able to configure the follow mouse and I think we want a little switch for this so we can turn it on and off and um, let's have a look in here uh, I think we want a um, a switch let's go for that a switch so uh, I'm going to copy this example here. Now, again, there's different ways you can set these switches up and we want to pass through a value of true or false. So I'm going to come and get some of these um, values in a second. But let's take this basic example. Let's copy this. Uh, and go back to our properties file. Now, um, we've already got a group and we want to put it in the same group. Um, so where uh, this is our control, this is the control here, and we want to put it just after this control. And an easy way to find it out in the editor here is to highlight this open bracket and it will show us where that code finishes. So I want to put in another control and we just need to put a comma in here to let them know there's another object. And now I'm going to paste that code in and you'll see our little toggle has appeared there, which is great. Um, and the title is visible, but let's call it follow mouse. Yeah, we've got enough room for that. Um, OK, and now what I want, I want to pass through some values. Let me just check. Oh, we've got a default true. Let's copy these um, true and false value. Make that a little bit tidier. So true value is true, false value is false. Um, now this should pass through a true or false value without this, but um, I'm setting a string value here just so I can be sure that it's getting set correctly. So the true value is true and the false value is false. So this is handy if you wanted to use this switch for something else, then you could pass through um, a class name, anything you want really. Um, let's have a look, ID display, uh, let's call this follow mouse. So that's how we reference this one, um, follow mouse. Um, let's go back to our template. And here we want to do the open and close brackets again and paste our value in there. So now uh, follow mouse is off or it should be. Yeah, so as I move my mouse around, you can see it doesn't follow uh, doesn't follow the mouse and then if we switch this on and let's go and preview this again and now it's reacting to our mouse uh, let's increase the number there so uh, we could go on and add a lot more values for this a lot more configurations um, there's a lot of fun options in here that you could add that you could go through and add uh, I mean, you could add all of these things so you could really customize it. Um, and that would just be a case of going through these properties and adding more controls like how you how you want to build it. Uh, maybe you want some drop down menus in there, things like that. Um, yeah. And then just hooking it up into here and and away you go. So now um, with this little component here, we can just use that in any project. I can just take this, add it to another website and boom, um, we've got snow on our website, which is really cool and really useful. So this little script here, I can build up a library of these things and um, and use them in the future. So uh, that's it for this video. It's uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a very old school effect, this snow, but it is kind of fun and it is getting to that time of year. So uh, that's how you do it. If you've got any questions on um, how to implement this or perhaps you're trying to implement it yourself and it's not working do just post a comment and we'll get back to you and help you out all right i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in the next one cheers bye